Marni by Marni is the debut perfume from the Italian avant-garde fashion house Marni. And the first thing you notice about Marni, the perfume, is the adorable bottle. It's really satisfying. It has a really nice uh, heft to it. It has an appealing sculptural upside down bell shape. There's these lovely little frosted glass polka dots all over it. There's a, a cloth label like something you'd find in their clothes. And a, a very nice modernist red and black and gold top that has this little bullseye. It's like something you'd see from a, um, a design element in the 30s or the 40s, very modernist. And it absolutely reflects the aesthetic of this Italian fashion house, which is simultaneously severe and playful. So there's a little bit of whimsy going on there, but it's underscored all the time by the integrity of uh, absolute belief in the stern design. Marnie kicks off with a very dry, almost bitter wooden grapefruit. It's just like you can visualize a grapefruit carved out of wood. And there's a little bit of black pepper in there and there's ginger and not enough to, to make you sneeze, but it's enough to kind of wake you up and make you feel alert and, you know, really on it. And then as soon as this bitter, dry citrus disperses somewhat, you become aware of more of the wood. So there's cedar wood in there and there's rose and the whole atmosphere reconfigures into a rose carved out of cedar wood and it's really more about the wood than the rose and it's very very dry but it is in no way shape or form like dead rose petals and some leftover potpourri that you found in a basket in a motel that's been abandoned for a generation it is not like that no it's like um, it's a little bit whiny, this rose, and it's enhanced by a little touch of patchouli. The patchouli is an uh, ingredient that always lends a little bit of fruit and heft to a perfume. Um, it's a woody note, and uh, but it does have this kind of sweet, ripe fruit wisp to it, just a little bit of glaze going on there. The whole effect of Marnie is very transparent uh, and it's um, faded. It's, it's an oriental that's faded. So that in itself is kind of an appealing thing because a lot of times when you smell an oriental or you think about an oriental perfume, it's pretty much a face full of opulent richness that's nighttime only and winter only. But in the case of Marnie Eau de Parfum, it is definitely a summer weight or a daytime oriental. And the effect of it is uh, interesting. It's, it's, it strikes me as kind of a brainy perfume. It's smart. It's unusual, it's different, but it's not challenging. It's not hard to live with, it's not hard to wear. And it definitely stands apart from a lot of the mainstream perfumes that we have today. Um, the mainstream perfumes being very uh, either full on fruity, very shampooy, um, very gourmand. So all about um, packing on those calories in terms of the smell. With Marnie, the effect strikes me as a very low-cal, skinny, no-fat version of A Beat Rouge by Guerlain. And that's a perfume that's marketed to men, but it has a lot of orange blossom and florals and has this leathery effect. And this is like the paired back, lean version of A Beat Rouge. I love it. Now, one of the things that you have to deal with with this perfume, which is so transparent and so light, is that it is not doesn't have a huge presence, so it's not going to be broadcasting to the hinterlands, and it doesn't last a huge amount of time. That's slightly tiresome, but what you have to do to counteract that is just layer that thing on, just blast yourself head to toe with the stuff. And I usually don't advocate that because in a lot of cases you're going to be gassing out people and in, in the vicinity. But in the case of Marnie. It can take it, you can take it, everybody else can take it. So just call to mind the scene from the original Planet of the Apes when Charlton Heston is being hosed down with a fire hose by the, the evil gorilla overlord thug. And uh, cast yourself as Charlton Heston, cast Marnie perfume as the fire hose, and you get the picture. It's a madhouse. I'm Katie Puckrick, and I smell.
Dangerous number five. 